And Shooter's able to hold the zone. Shooter cuts to the middle for Minnesota. Drops to the trailing Shooker. On the backhand, they score! Eric Stahl off the feed from Zucker. Sealer able to filter it down for Erickson. That shakes away from Miller and Sullivan score! Marcus Foligno set up by Joel Erickson. Stahl. Stahl to the outside. Ryan Suter has room. There's Zucker. There's a goal! Jason Zucker! Donato into the corner. Suter centers for Parisi. He scores! Jake, last time me, you, and Bubba met and talked about the Wild, uh, it was right after a really rough October in October where they finished dead last in the NHL. Now after a 4-2 win against Florida, they're at a 10-game point streak, and they're 13-11-4. What is going on, man? I don't know. It's weird because I, I never gave up on the Wild. And I always said, you just need to get back to 500 and, anything, and anything's possible. But and now they're there and they're two games above 500. They're just they're just doing. Like, I remember talking the last time, the last couple of podcasts. I remember I was we were at a point where I was saying like they're just disgusting to watch. It's just gross to well, watch. They, they no were. I mean, or anything. in your defense, they, they were. were disgusting to watch for a little bit there. Yeah, yeah. And now in these last ten games, despite some you know couple hiccups, you know we can talk about some of those games where. They had a couple goal lead like in Boston, but, but still they, they, they're winning games and they're two games above 500. Like they're just clicking the chemistry. I think it's also a mindset. You know, I heard something where, you know, if the team is losing a lot and they don't think they're going to win, they're not going to win. But if they, if, if they feel like they can't be beat, which I think they're in that mindset right now, they're they They truly think they can't lose. So yeah. they're in that point right now. And they're winning games. Yeah, and I mean, especially lately, too, during this 10-game uh, point streak the Wild have going on, the veteran players have really started to step up. Eric Stahl, Zach Parise, and Miko Koivu, they've all been playing way better than they were at the beginning of the year, don't you think? Oh, yeah, by far. I mean, they're, they're these are the guys that, like, I was saying, you know, in pre previous podcasts that in order for them to – really salvage a season which they have time to do they need these veteran guys to step up like you know Eric Stahl Amico Koivu and kind of compliment these younger talent because the young guys can't can't run this team all on their own mm -hmm. and these guys have been stepping up really well Eric Stahl's been scoring and Miko Koivu you know had that huge um that huge shootout goal uh, against Dallas yes, and it's a thousand game, game. yeah and even, yeah, uh, even was, the younger guys, too, so Fiala and uh, Donato, they've been playing a little better lately as well. Um, let's, like, talk really quick, too. I mean, aren't, they're only two or three points out of a wild card spot, like you said. But uh, they're also yeah. only a few points ahead of Nashville and Chicago um, in, the, in the Central Division. Uh, the Wild currently is at fifth. And um, yep. it's funny because the Wild have played actually only one more game than both of them. And, you know, so they could actually get fall back to last in the Central pretty easy. So it's kind of funny how the NHL is mm -hmm. working where um, just a few points really separates you from the last place spot and the playoffs. It's kind of – that's why you got to love the NHL. It's so competitive. I know. It's so balanced. Like you look – I was looking at the Central Division – and it's insane to just see the one through seven, how, how close they are, you know, how separated they are by, you know, such few points. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about the NHL. It's so balanced. Like you, you, if you're sitting in fifth or sixth in like a division, well, I don't think there's that many teams in like a division in the NFL or NBA, but if you were sitting at that, at that blow end part of a division in like the NBA or NFL or MLB, you're, you're not doing good at all. And mm -hmm. now they're sitting at fifth and it's, out of seven teams and they're they're looking good they're two games above 500 but i think they're only separated by a few points between them and like dallas or or winnipeg whoever's in that third spot you know for that first while or for that first playoff spot um mm -hmm. in the central division they're not that far behind yeah and you know they're a two-game win streak you know away from being in the playoffs or they're a two game loss streak away from being last in the division. So they're kind of in an interesting spot right now where it's like, yeah, yeah it's, it's exciting, but you know, you, the season still could, you still could tank the season or we could be a pleasant surprise at this point. But I mean, it's making it fun though, especially compared to the beginning of the season when it was just an absolute train wreck to watch. 
Um, I know. So uh, if you're watching YouTube, we're going to put up uh, the 10 game. If you're watching this podcast on YouTube, we're going to put up the 10 game uh, point streak that they have going. And Jake and I are going to talk through each of the games here. Um, so the very first game that started off their 10, uh, their 10 point streak is against Arizona. It was a good, solid 3-2 to two win. Um, the team really needed at that point, too. They were really, really far behind. Yeah. Um, the next game, they had a pretty bad loss, an overtime loss to Carolina, where they blew a late lead. Um, so you don't, you don't, you know, that's something that this team has done all year. They've blown late leads, and when we go through the rest mm-hmm. of these ten games, you'll notice that that's also another trend: blowing late leads, and that has to worry you a little bit, don't you think, Jake? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. But it's it's it, that I'd rather be worrying about that right now. And having that as a concern than where they were at the beginning of the year where they were giving up, you know, two or three or four goals in a matter of, like, two minutes. Yep, and they were only um, scoring, like, one so, or two goals a game, too. And, I mean, and like, only scoring one or two goals. So now it's, like, an improvement to be like, oh, now they're blowing a late lead, you know. Mm-hmm. But that sucks. You can't be doing that. But now we're at a point where we're talking about, like, hey, they're, they're blowing these late leads, still getting a point out of it, but they're blowing these late leads in games where they could – they could win in regulation instead of going in overtime or they have not played well at all mm-hmm. and they're sacrificing at least one point and they've they've you know they've left at least three points on the ice you know in these last 10 games that they could have back if, and, the, if the game ends in overtime yeah. the wild they're 0 4 this year they're you know the league worst in overtime since 2015 we all know this it's just you know once the game goes into overtime if, if the game ends in overtime the wild will lose if it goes to the shootout they'll have a chance like a 50 50 chance but it's not it's yeah. not good when they go to overtime you kind of know you're just gonna get one point um you know, it's it's just yeah yeah, so moving on, uh, game three of their 10-game uh, point streak was a nice 4-1 to win-, win against Buffalo. Buffalo has actually been pretty good this year, but um, at the time of the win, um, Buffalo only had one win in their last – one or two wins in the last nine games. So they were definitely you know, a struggling team, and Minnesota was you know, at the beginning of their point streak. So it was an all right one, I guess. And uh, they're, they had a great win, if you want to comment about this one, against Colorado, a division rival. Yeah. Do you have any comments on that, a 3-2 to two win? I just think that was a big win. I think uh, coming at back home that day, I thought we, you know, we had a pretty good chance to beat them, and we did. And especially coming off a road win uh, against uh, Buffalo, and we were a team that needed to, you know, start winning games at home. And we don't have a lot to, we don't have a lot of home games to start the year. You know, it's coming up now where we're going to start be playing more home games. But in the first couple months here, we're not playing a lot of home games. And that's a game that you're playing the the best team in the division at the time. You know, top team. I don't. I think they may have fallen out of that first place, but they were like a really good. You know, the top team in the central division, and and to come back home and play them and win, you know that that allows you to get points over them before you really start having to try try to play them on the road. And that was a good game there in that middle stretch there of of their point streak. To you know, that was huge to take two over top team in Colorado and as great as a win as that was the next two games were probably equally as disappointing the first one against Boston they had they blew a two goal lead in 40 seconds in the last two minutes of the third period and then lost you know like two minutes into overtime absolutely embarrassing then the very next game uh two days later against uh New York when they when they were in New York it was another uh, you know same exact thing what happened against Carolina they they, they blew a late lead and they lost 30 seconds into overtime so overtime's killer and we just gotta we just gotta win in the regular session if we want two points so hopefully they can start doing that I know and that was the that was that three game road trip, another big road trip, and they're currently on one now um, down in Florida. But that was that East Coast kind of road trip, and you know they did come away with four or six points. You know going into that next game against New Jersey, who the Devils have been you know not pretty bad this year. I mean they fired their head coach, and um, to get four or six points on the East Coast, you know that's huge. But you, you at least could have got still got five or six out of that you know you had two late leads mm-hmm. especially Boston I'm surprised we even played that well against Boston you know and looking back on that I think anybody would say hey I'll take a point over Boston but if you look at how the game ended you'd be disappointed but Boston's been killing teams on their home ice yeah Boston's and, been great this year and so that's why I was so I excited when they had uh, the two goal yeah. lead when it was four to two late yeah, they're up four two yeah and, and you know so at, that, that, at that point too it would have been um 
three wins in a row and it would have been you know you know three straight wins two points in a row that would have been huge for the team but you know they right. they, they, they outplayed boston in 90 percent of the game they just you know gave it away mm-hmm. at the end but i really like what we're seeing exactly. at home because uh, after the where they took um you know the majority of the games on their east coast road trip they went back home yep. they destroyed the ottawa senators seven to two yeah my and then gosh. nico koi who's 1000th game we played the dallas stars where he got a 700th point and had that ridiculous vintage shootout goal that we all love yeah um and so if you actually look at all the games that we played at home during the stretch we won them all in regulation except for carolina yep. so that was one of the things yeah. i talked about in previous podcasts where if the wild were going to get back they were going to have to win their home games because because they have a huge yeah. chunk of home games because they, you know, coming up in the season because they played so many games on the road to start the year. Um, so that brings us to yesterday's game against the Florida Panthers. It was an amazing game, Jake. You want to take us through it? Yeah. So pretty much the, you know, the gist of the story. It was, you know, or the gist of the game was, you know, Capo Kakinen was making a second start, and you know, you look good early on, but Florida would go up, you know, two nothing. Um, you know, and they're pretty much similar goals on Capo Kacken and I noticed, you know, just get it, beating him on that blocker side, you know, snipes, you know, hard, hard shots to save, but you know, granted it didn't look good early. Like you thought that Florida was going to keep scoring and you thought, okay, maybe our point streak's going to end tonight. Maybe it's just going to be a bad game. Yeah. The wild only had five but, shots after that first period. So it was really one sided. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then we started, we started really coming back on that. You know, we scored two unanswered goals. And then, um, let me see. Let me see here. I'm trying to think. Uh, double double check who got those goals. So yeah, you had yeah you have Jason Zucker scoring that first goal off that really sweet breakaway. He got commit uh, you know caused that turnover in the defensive zone. Mm-hmm. Took it right off the Florida's defender stick. Went down and got a nice you know nice backhand uh, breakaway. And then Matt Zuccarello had a beautiful snipe like for that tying goal. I, I, that was just like. It, it, like he he lost control of the puck in the corner, went to like the you know the middle of the circle, and still got like a quick shot off. It looked like there was like five sticks right around his stick, and he still got a laser of a shot. Yeah, and we need, we need more of that. That was great to see. Yeah, and that that's Zuccarello. I think that's what Zuccarello has been known to do when he when he's playing well in past years, and he can he has a hell of a shot, and that happened. And I really got to give it up for Carson Susi. I love that. He's uh he got you know essentially the game winning goal you know the you know leading goal with uh you know four minutes into that almost five minutes into that third period and I like to see him score because I, I think I've been really impressed with them this year as a defender as like a depth guy to kind of step in for you know well patterns out and just kind of stepping in that role and he got a nice goal you know it went right under the pads it probably shouldn't have went in but um it was still a great play to see him get up there and score in the third period and. Then of course we got that empty netter to win four two, but four and answer goals for the Wild in that game. I, I mean, can't I think complain. An even that bigger, was... an even bigger story too is forty four saves from Kakinen by the end of the yeah. night, which is second. Yeah, he... I think it was the most saves ever in a rookie for a rookie in the Minnesota Wild history. So that was unbelievable, especially after how bad that first period was to respond. Yeah, like he that. recovered. That was awesome. So I just want to also just note really quick, if anyone out there is interested in knowing more about Miko Koibu's 1,000th game, I wrote an article for it at 10,000takesmn.com. So go there, check out our wild content there. Also, if you're interested in hearing our weekly wild content, Jake and I are both on another podcast called The Minnesota Rundown, where we discuss everything in Minnesota sports, including the wild. And uh, there we kind of just give our general our general takes on the wild from a week-to-week basis. Um, this podcast, Wild Takes, is kind of more where we dive in really, really deep. Mm-hmm. So now we're going to go, uh, yeah, we're going to look at the really player stats for the rest of the year. And I mean, um, this is actually something I really like to see. Jason Zucker is leading the wild in points. It didn't look like it was going to be that yeah. way at all, especially after the first month yeah, and no. a half of the season. But he's definitely turned it around. Um, out of everyone you see, um, especially the you know the top ten point getters, who has impressed you the most? Well, it, it's I, I think to look at the top ten um, as of late, I would say you know he's down at the bottom, but like Miko Koivu, you know he has twelve points. He wasn't looking good early on, and to to see him come out, you know he has ten assists. So far, he's creating a lot of plays. He's getting himself involved, and he's not 
you know, he's trying to maybe silence some of the critics a little bit with how he's been playing lately. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, he only has two goals, but like I said, he's, you know, he has 10 assists. He's, he's plus two on the ice. You know, he's creating a lot of plays and he's looking really good. You know, he's being a big distributor right now and he's, he's been looking good on the ice. Yeah, out of those 12 points, six of them have come in the last 13 games. So he has definitely stepped it up. Um, number two yeah. in the team in points is Eric Stahl, and he's definitely looked yeah. way better from a start. Um, he has eight goals, yeah. uh, 11 assists, second in the team in goals right behind the surging Zach Parise. We'll talk about him in a sec. Something I want to point yeah. out is that minus column again. It looks like our top five point mm-hmm. getters all have pretty hefty minus numbers. That's going to have to – our star players have to definitely turn that around if this team wants to continue their um, great run they've been on lately, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of that – and I think those numbers have moved up slightly, uh, you know, since in, in the last month, because I know that a lot of those, pl- their, a lot of their negative numbers that you see in that stack column or that you that you know are there are is from pretty much that first, you know, that first month of just horrendous play, and all players have really started to step up, but they're still, you know, Eric Stahl still sitting at a minus nine, Zucker's still sitting at a minus six, and they're still, you know, on the ice. When they're given up, when their team has given up goals, and that still has to change if they want to keep improving and keep winning games, you know, to you know keep it going and and you know, surge for you know some playoff spots here, you know, here in December heading into January. That that definitely still needs to you know move in the positive direction, which I think it is, but it, they're still sitting in some you know those lower negative numbers. Someone who's looked uh, who looked really unmotivated at the beginning of the year, but now it seems to have that fire going is Zach Barese, number three in the team at points with twelve goals, mm-hmm. five assists for seventeen total points. Um, in his last eleven games in uh, November, the dude put up seven. Seven goals, um, and then you know I yeah. think uh, yesterday he scored an empty netter as well. So he's been absolutely on fire. Um, he's been playing great. Ryan Suter fourth in the team at points with sixteen. Spurgeon uh, fifth in the team, tied with the uh, Suter with the uh, sixteen. So Spurgeon just got hurt after uh, after the Florida game. Uh, they said originally yep. it was a broken hand and he'd be out for four to six weeks, but today the Wild came out and said he had an upper body. An undisclosed upper body injury and will be out for two weeks. So um, I guess yeah, that's, that's good. a lot better. I, it's way better than yeah, four to six, but it's like why don't they just say yeah. it's the hand if we already know it's the hand? Right. I, I I don't. Yeah, I saw like reports like it's his hand, broken hand, then they go to upper body. I I don't I, I don't know how you misreport that, but yeah. whatever. I'll take two weeks. Jeez. Oh, uh, well, I heard the hand. Oh, it's an upper body. <laughs> what? Well, Something that I, um, I mean, I do like to see that we have two defensemen in the top five in our points, but, you know, I that means our defensemen are putting up points, but that also means that our forwards are not putting up points, or at least, you know, not as, yeah. not on a whole team basis Frequently. from top to bottom. We just kind of have the top guys. Um, someone who's really stepped right. up lately, number six on the team in points, Kevin Fiala. Uh, yeah, another player who had a rough start. Um, I think you could blame that rough start on the fact that he was signed really late into the season, so he wasn't with the team with training camp. He got thrown in, you know, right in the middle of the preseason. And even, you know, after the first two games of the preseason, Bruce Boudreaux was talking about how rusty he was looking. And if he could, he'd like let him get a stint at the minors. But, you know, he couldn't do that. So yep. he's definitely worked out right. his kinks, and he's been playing awesome lately. Uh, number seven, Matt Zuccarello. Just like you said earlier, this guy's been on fire lately. and He's been putting the puck in the back of the net. Have you been liking what you've been seeing out of him? Oh, yeah, definitely. This is what I... I, you know, at the beginning of the year in the preseason, he's just looked slow. He, he He's not, like I said, we were like, I know he was injured like for a few games at the beginning of the year, but like our first podcast, he was like non-existent out, non-existent out there. I think he had like no points, like the first five games or something like that. Or if it was maybe one point. Yeah. No, it was like and zero points in just, five games and he was hurt for like yeah, five was, games after. <laughs> yeah. It was just stupid. And it's like this guy, we're paying him all this money. He's supposed to be a guy to kind of resurge this team a little bit. I know it was early, but it was like, it wasn't looking good. He looked like he wasn't even in any of the plays. He didn't look like he was fast. And now when I see him on the ice, I'm like, he looks good. I'm like, this guy's exciting to watch. He really actually has been making our team look better mm-hmm. when he's on the ice. He's He's been faster. He has a hell of a shot. He's a kind of the goal scorer guy that we kind of are maybe missing. And I'm just, I'm just glad overall this top seven or top five just looks more like the scores that I, I should, that I like to see in our top five scores for a while. There was Brad hunt and I just didn't like that. It just looked wrong. <laughs> well, I'm Brad sorry. Hunt is, is just one spot right behind them, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he's still doing good, but that was just like, 
stupid that he was her top point scorer. Now yeah. this looks like more of a normal chart to, to see our top scores. And you got Zucker, Stahl, Parisi, Suters, Spurgeon, and even Fiala up there. That's that's awesome. And but I'm just glad that just means these guys, these these older guys are stepping up, which which is they what what they needed to do mm-hmm. to get going you know they need to figure out how to win games at home and obviously transfer that over to road wins which they've done a little bit but these older guys have to step up these veteran players and they're doing that and that's what i like to see yeah so uh let's look at you know now the 10 through 19 uh point leaders on the team you know the bottom half yep. point scores i'm uh, not going to go through all of them because not all of them deserve mentioning i will talk about matt dumba i've been uh kind of unimpressed with him this year um he yeah. looked so great last year but he's currently a minus seven Nine points in 28 games isn't that bad for a defenseman, but he only has three goals. Mm-hmm. And with a goal, he was leading the, like um, all defensemen in goals by the time he got hurt last season. So I was really kind mm-hmm. of expecting that. And I think the team was a, the team needs that if they're going to be successful going forward. So I think me and you both want more yeah. of him. Uh, do you want to highlight a player or two um, in the bottom you know, uh, 10 through 19 spots here? Well, yeah, I mean, just a couple of players that I've, I've, you know, thoroughly enjoyed watching as of late. I, I, I you know, Jordan Greenway, um, you know, he, he has three, you know, he has nine points, you know, it's not a lot, but I've been fairly impressed with him. He's, he's getting aggressive. He's getting physical and he's, you know, he's opening up a lot of up, open up the ice, creating opportunities for the, for the wild. He's kind of a big guy that, you know, kind of fills that role of getting players and he's been creating some, uh, opportunities. He had a nice goal, uh, you know, a few games ago, uh, a few games ago, a few games. I was about to say a few games a goal. I know. I was that, hearing that. that a few, few games ago. I forgot what game, uh, who it was against. It might've been against, uh, Dallas or, or the game before. I think it actually might've been against Ottawa, but, um, he had a beautiful like backhand and goal and he's been looking okay. Um, Ryan Hartman's been imp- impressing me. Um, in a sense, he, he's even getting aggressive, but then, uh, uh, Victor Rask, you know, his, his stats, you know, he's two goals and three assists and not all that great, but he's been, he's been looking like he's been playing aggressive. Like he's playing, like he wants to be there and he has, he's, you know, his plus minus is six. Yeah. And he's missed, and he's missed 10 he's, games this year too. So that five points, yeah, it's and, not, it's not, he hasn't played the full season. So. Yeah, and he's he's been impressing me. Yeah, yeah, he's not his stats don't show up per se, but he's he's been out in the ice getting aggressive and creating opportunities that I've liked to see and he's been sur- looking better than I thought. I mean, he was a guy that I was like he shouldn't be on the team, but he's been a nice uh depth player to mm-hmm. to uh, to the roster. I've been I really still, still not worth him. that $4 million contract. No, he's, he's definitely, not. Definitely not at all. better. Uh, it looked like he was going to get cut like like but he's playing better yeah. than a cut player. One last thing I want to yeah. point out is Marcus Foligno. Um, uh, mm-hmm. He was leading all forwards in points. So no disrespect to him, but it's glad to see him at the bottom of the list because he's a fourth-line, third-line grinder. He's not supposed to be leading your team in points. So, I mean, no, no disrespect to him, but it's kind of nice to see him back at the bottom because that means that our yeah. star players are actually stepping up. And, uh- yeah, no disrespect to Bubba because he <laughs> wants them to get the he wants him to get the C. He does. I don't even think he's next in line. I think there are talk. I, I was reading some you know was reading some speculation that if if Koivu leaves or if he retires, the next guy in line is probably Spurgeon yeah. to possibly get that. Maybe that we just signed him seven contract. years. It won't be Felino. I'm sorry, Bubba, but it's not happening. You don't think there would be a chance it could be good old Zach Attack, Zach Parisi? It yeah, I I think definitely like him or. Spurgeon or or, or Parisi, definitely, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be Felino. It's just not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think Bubba should start that pension uh, that he started talking yeah, about that, in the first that ever pension Bubba plan. <laughs> yeah, the pension let's, plan. Let's move on to goaltenders here. Um, we've had three play for us this season. Devin Dubnik's been having some family trouble, so he hasn't. He hasn't. Uh, his wife is yep. sick. Um, I don't know too much about it, so I don't want to get too far into it. But yeah, um, I hope yeah. I hope everything's okay there, and I hope yep. he like he deserves to take any time that he needs for his family. And so I hope everything's okay in that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't playing too hot before. Um, no, who knows how much the situation's been affecting him the whole time. Yeah, so, that's that's I don't know. Yeah, so um, so yeah. we're gonna just, we're not gonna really talk about him. We're gonna talk about the two main guys until uh, Dubnik is back and everything's better with him. Uh, so we're going to talk, your goalie, your, you were a goalie, Jake. Um, so I'd love to hear your opinion on our two goalies, Alex Daylock and Capo Kakinen. I can't, is that how, you, how, how do you say his last name? I have no Cap, clue. Capo Kakinen. Kakinen, so, okay, so we'll go with that. And first off, I still play in some <laughs> beer league, men's league stuff. I'm not, I haven't put in the boots yet or put in the skates or whatever. 
Uh, <laughs> but pr- pretty much, yeah, it's pretty much you're pretty much retired when you're doing that. Yeah. Um, but 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 yeah, but goes to that. I've been I've been very impressed. Um, and I know we were talking about on the, on the Minnesota rundown that I think you had asked me uh, on the most recent Minnesota rundown that if I'm if I was concerned about the goalie goaltender situation with Dubnik being out. Um, but quite frankly, I, I'm not. I'm I've been very impressed with Alex Stalock. He's been very disciplined in the net. Um, you know, he's, he's seven and like three. He's one. been. I know he yeah. has been. He's been looking. He's so quick. He's smaller, but he's been. He. He's he still takes up the net in the sense of how quick he is still in the net and he's been looking really good and he's definitely could is our number one guy. It's hard to say that if Dubnik does come back healthy even or whatever mentally and he gets back in a physic gets back healthy physically, I think that it, it's going to be hard to make a case for him to get more starts than Stalock the way stalock has been playing. Yeah, and seven wins, he, three losses, and his thirteen starts. Yeah. I mean that's that's great. I know, and then only. You know, he's 2.67 goals allowed, which can be improved on, but that's not as bad as, you know, Dubnik, who is allowing over three goals a game. And even Capo kakinen has been looking really good. And he's not a – he wasn't, you know, highly touted coming up here. I think he was talked about as, oh, he's a young goaltender. That's doing okay down in Iowa, but how is he going to adapt to the NHL? And in the two games, he's been – He's won them both, and he's only allowed two goals in you know an average between both games. And he has a ninety five percent save percentage. Like we said, he had forty four saves in the Florida game on uh, on Tuesday, and I think he actually saved thirty eight straight shots mm-hmm. to end the game. And he, you look at him, he almost way look, way he plays. He almost seems like I I don't know how he doesn't let in more goals. Like I'm kind of watching him. Like he seems like he's kind of slower, but he it's like he plays smart. Like he's not the super quick Jonathan Quick goaltender like a Jordan Bennington or something out of St. Louis, but he's it's like he plays smart. He plays the post very well. He's he's just he seems like he always knows where the puck is and he knows where when to when to go down and when to stay up. And yeah, he doesn't seem like he's the fastest goalie, but he seems like he's big and he takes up a lot of space in the net. And it's like he knows what he's doing. Like he's smart. Mm-hmm. And and that's what we didn't see out of Dubnik. He doesn't look rattled out there. Capo doesn't. He looks like he's just he's just making smart decisions when he's in the net. And that's what we've. And that's why I think you know, and it shows for it in his two wins and his first two starts. Mm-hmm. And I, I tweeted last night too. Last night, Capo Kakinen, at least for the next week has become my favorite Minnesota Wild player. The dude was on yeah. fire yesterday. He was the only reason why we won that game, actually. When you have 46 shots against you and you and you only put up three goals, you shouldn't win the game normally. So he no. had, my favorite thing about him is he had the balls yesterday to go for the empty net goal. When, when, yeah, uh, that was so cool. Yes, when Florida pulled their goalie, he shot it down the ice. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, I mean, it was one of yeah. the most exciting moments of the season so far, in my opinion. So I just I fucking yeah. love to see that. Yeah, I, I I haven't seen a goalie do that in like a like you don't see that very often. And to see him pull up, I, no, I saw him going on. I'm like, oh, maybe he's gonna pass it. Like he was setting up, and then he just I saw him just fl- fling the puck all the way down the ice, and it wasn't that far away from the goal as much. I, it was closer than I thought. And I'm like, oh, that'd have been great to see him score, especially this this rookie goaltender. And ah, it was so close. But I feel like you'll have another opportunity. Yeah, he will. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Let's uh, let's get into our very last thing, our very last segment. It's time for wild takes. We're we're gonna play our little game that we uh, that we started and we made up last week called Over Under. So first, I'll explain the game. Uh, it's called Over and Under. We made it up uh, in our very last podcast. Uh, so right now, if you're watching the YouTube version of the podcast, you'll be able to see the results on the screen. Um, so how the game works pretty much is that I present a scenario, like how many goals a certain player will score, and then I'll present a number. It's up to me, Jake, and Bubba to then think if it's going to be over the number or under the number. If we get it right, we get a point, and whoever has the most points at the end of the year is going to win, and the losers are going to have to get the win or something. Um, we'll talk about that the next time Bubba's on. So um, last last month we did the last 11 games of November, and uh the scoreboard after uh, one month is Bubba is in charge, like he always likes to be. He's in the lead with five points. Jake is second with yep. three, and then I unfortunately sit in last place. But I think I'm going to make a comeback in the coming months. Um, so let's get right into this. Okay, so I'm going to present a number, like I said earlier. Anything over the number is over. 
but when we say under, it's gonna be the number that you see or anything under. So under also includes the number seen. Sorry if I took forever to explain that, but it's kind of a confusing game. Hope you can follow along. Oh, they'll figure it out. Our fan <laughs> base is intelligent. Okay, so the very first, uh, very first category we're gonna focus on today is goals. Uh, the, um, there's gonna be 13 games left in December, so we're gonna be uh, doing this for the last 13 games of December. We're gonna start off with one, our one and only favorite defenseman on the Wild. If your favorite defenseman is Brad Hunt, uh, we're gonna start off with him. Uh, we're gonna mm -hmm. do two goals. We're gonna set the over under for the next 13 games. Jake, what do you got for that? Um, I mean, every, I, I'm going to take the over on that. I think Brad Hunt's going to have a slight resurgence, and he's going to get a couple one-timer goals, and he will uh, maybe get three goals in that time span. Let, let's go with that. Sure, I struggled with this one. Um, what killed me a lot last time was choosing the over, and it would be exactly the number that was you know displayed for the over-under number. And because yep. I chose the over... It screwed me. So I think that Brad Hunt is going to get exactly two goals. So I went with the under. Uh, we got Bubba's answer before. He's being a working man right now. He chose the under for Brad Hunt. Uh, let's, now we're going to move on to Kevin Fiala. He's been on fire lately. Um, over under number set for him is going to be four. What do you think? Is he going to get more than four goals or less than four Ooh. goals? Or four goals itself? Ooh. You know, I, I, I might have to take the under on this one because I think the max that he could get over these 11 games is maybe four goals. 13 um, games. To be honest with 13 you. games. Oh, 13 games. That's right. So 13 games, I think he'll I, I think he'll get to four goals, but I don't think he'll get over that. Okay. So, so I'm going to have to go with the under. Sounds good. I'm going to take the over. He's been surging, and I really like to roll with a player when they're hot. Um, so I'm going to go with the over. Bubba went with the under. That's going to be a theme you're going to see a lot, and it's because Bubba hates Minnesota sports. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's yeah, go. No, he, yeah, <laughs> he definitely is your typical Minnesota so. sports fan. Like, like when they're up, yeah. he's up, but when they're down, he's yeah. down. He claims, he, yeah, and he claims he has nothing to do with them, and he has he d was wasn't born here or something. But then when they're up, I love this state. No, this is my home. <laughs> I, I don't get it. So, Let's, whatever. Whatever. Let's move on to Ryan Suter. Over, no, over under number I set with him is going to be just one goal in 13 games. So, if you think he's going to get wow. more than one goal, take the over. I, I think he'll get more than one goal. I'll take the over on that. I I, I, I think Suter has he's been playing well. He just hasn't been able to find the back of the net. And I, I think he'll do that over the next 13 games more than once. So, I'm what the hell, I'll take the over. I'll take the over too. That's and Baba actually took the over for this one as well. So wow, okay. there you go. We all took the over. That um, we're gonna move on to points category now. We're gonna start off with Zuccarello or Zuccarello. Um, the over on um, the over under number we're gonna set for him is seven points in the next thirteen games. What do you think? Ooh. he's been hot. Um, lately. You know what? He has been hot, and I I, I see. Uh... You know, I'll, I'll go with the I'll go with the over on this one. I'll take the over, the over. Um, just because I think I think Zuccarello has been hot. I think he'll I think he'll accumulate over seven points over the next thirteen games. I think he'll not all, all of course not all being goals, but I think he'll be able to create a lot of he's been creating a lot of plays here, and I think he'll be able to get some assists in, in that too. So I think he'll get over over seven points. He's been playing really well lately, and I think he's going to have a good 13 games. I think he's going to have you know around 5 to 6, 5 to 7 points. I don't see him going over um, the 8 because, I, I don't know, that's uh, you know 13 games. It's you know, more than you know, I got half a point a game. So maybe he could do that, but uh, right. hopefully he could do that. That would be great for the team. But I'm just going to go with the under. Um, no surprise, Bubba did as well. Let's move on to Luke uh, Cunning. It's going to be over under number. We're going to set at 5. Um, I'm gonna go first on this one. I'm gonna take the over. Um, he's been another player that's been on fire. He was like near last on the team in points just a few weeks ago, and now he's number ten. Um, like I said earlier, I just love to roll with the players who are hot right now, and he's hot. So yeah, yeah I think he's gonna get over five points. Bubba chose the under. No surprise. Jake, what do you got? No surprise. I think if this was like a six, if you had set this number at six, I'd probably take the under. But I think at five, I think it, it's it's a safe pick to take the over. On this. I think he'll at least get six points. Um, I'll take the over on this. Luke Cunningham's been looking good. I am impressed with him. And, uh, yeah, he's a Missouri guy playing hockey in the pro pros. I think he's from Missouri. And, uh, Gotta yeah, love it. I, mean, I, I like him. 
Gotta love it. So last time in the points category, we had Alex Daylock because he is a crazy motherfucker. He likes to move that puck yep. right up the ice he and does. try to get a point. Um, unfortunately, yep. uh, me and you both said that he would get a point. Alex said he wouldn't get a point, and he didn't. So that's unfortunate. I know Alex was able to sneak a point there. Now let's go with Capo Kakinen, though. Okay, right? We saw him go for that empty netter, right? That was exciting to me. Mm -hmm. So yep. do you think that there's a possibility he can get a point over the next 13 games? Bubba went with the under. I went with the under, so we both say no. What do you think? Well, I feel like this could be one where I could be like, I'll take the over to, you know, differentiate it between you two but I I, I I think he's I think we're gonna see a couple more attempts from him but I don't think we're going to see him get a point okay so you're going so I'm gonna with take the under. the under on this Sounds yes good. I don't see him as much as I'd love to see that I, I hope I'm wrong prove me wrong I mean that'll be great but I'm just being conservative on this yep yeah, so if we lo if we all lose we all if I lose we all lose so yeah at a certain point one. you got to start playing to win so I like that yeah, pick by you. Exactly. You're, not, you're not playing to be different. You're playing to win. Yep. Um, yep. The very last category is going to be wins. Um, so we're going to set. We're going with Alex Daylock first. Um, over the next 13 games, do you think that he will get over three wins? I think so. I, I'll take the over on that. Take the over. I'm going to take the over yeah. as well. Um, yeah, why are you taking how the much over? Start I, I think it, it comes down to actually how many games opportunity he's going to play, and I think he's going to obviously play a majority of those games. It, it, with the timeline of Dubnik up in the air right now, let's just assume he ain't coming back within the next 13 games. Stalock's going to at least play 10 of the 13 games, or, or 9 of the 13, and there's no way he's going to – he the way he's been playing, there's no way he's going to you know drop 6 of 9 games or something like that. I think he's been playing too well. He's been playing smart, and he's been holding the post well, and I think he's definitely going to, and the way the rest of the team has been playing, I don't think that he's going to lose, you know, he's going to lose the majority of his games. He's definitely going to get, I think, like five or six points, or six wins, honestly. Yeah, I'm going to take the over, too. Um, you know, he's been 7-3 and three in a start so far, and you just can't really argue with those stats. Whenever he's been starting, the team has seemed to be playing yeah. better. And same with Kakinen. You know, what I really like to see yeah. with both of those is combined, they've started 15 games, and they have like a yep. they have a record of nine and three combined. So I mean, that's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna take the over for Stela. Very last category. Oh, Bubba, by the way, he took the over as well. So that was his last okay. over of the day. Surprising, but he thinks Stela will get. Uh, he, oh yeah, yeah. He's Stela's one of his boys, isn't it? He loves Staylock. Yeah, so yeah, that's he not surprising Stalock. now that I think about it. Yeah, not surprising. <laughs> no. Nope. Very last category of the day is going to be team wins. How many wins will the Minnesota Wild get over the 13 games? I said it at six. So that means that uh, they have to win at least seven if you're going to take the over. No surprise, Bubba took the under. What do you get, Jake? I'm 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 staying I'm staying with this team, staying hot. I know I won this uh, won this category last time. I'm taking the over. I think they're going to stay hot. I think they're going to at least win seven of the next 13, and they're going to keep on on rolling. And they're going to be, if they do win the seven of the next 13, I think they'll, at least seven of the next 13, I think they'll be uh, 20 and, what is it, 20 and 17, mm -hmm. uh, if you look at that. they I mean, they could do better than that, honestly, the way they've been playing. Yeah, I think they could win nine of their 13 or something yep. like that. They've just been trending towards that. And, and obviously, um, there was some confusion in this from Ike Bubba last time, but I'm going to just clarify it right now. Team wins means legit wins. So um, mm -hmm. over er, um, overtime wins and shootout wins. Now overtime wins will count. The shootout wins will count. Well, yeah. But the losses there don't. Like you're not gonna get any credit for that. Right. Overtime a loss. loss. Nope. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm yep. gonna go take the over as well. I'm. I don't know, Jake. I think uh, you, you kind of have to. With uh, they're on a 10 game point streak. They're hot. You got to keep riding the streak. It's like oh. how you're a gambler. If you're hot, you're not gonna you're not gonna leave the table. You're gonna stay. You're gonna play a couple more hands. Yeah. So uh, yeah, fuck it. Let's exactly. go with that. Um, uh, we're gonna end now with some hot takes, Jake. We love we love hot takes here at 10,000 takes. Uh, the weather's cold enough, so we don't need cold takes, right? Right, exactly. So I'm gonna go it's, first. It's, uh, we'll, we'll both do two hot takes of the year or for the month of December, okay? And uh, okay. my very first hot take is crazy is gonna score a minimum, minimum of eight goals in December. 
Wow. Yeah, I mean, he's been on fire. He scored seven in the last 11 games in uh, November. Already scored one uh, yesterday against Florida. So, yeah, I definitely think that eight goals minimum for him in the month. He seems motivated, and he, everything's clicking. The team's clicking. So, yeah, that's my first hot take for the month of December. Yeah, that's reasonable, though. Yeah, so what's I, yours? I, 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 you know, I... It, it comes on to, you know, I, I think my biggest hot take, and I, I've, I've thought about this, and I, I think I think this goes with, you know, the team wins being over, but I think the Wilds' point streak is going to continue for at least another eight games. Another just, eight I don't know. games? I, 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 just, I, just, I just think that that's, hey, is that a bit of a stretch? I just... That just sounds like a good number to me. I think they're gonna at least loot, fall in overtime the way they've been playing. They're 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 gonna keep on getting points. They're gonna keep on accumulating things, mm -hmm. and by the end of December, they're gonna be right in the loop to possibly, you know, in that top three in the Central Division. Yeah, I think eight, eighteen games. I mean, I think Columbus has the record. They set it a while back for most points in a row. But eighteen games would be up there for one of the biggest points streaks in wow. the NHL, wouldn't it be? Like of all time. I don't know. It might be a. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a bit of a stretch, but it's a hot take. So. Hey, they did it. Uh, they did it with uh, what the Oakland Athletics when they made a movie, The Moneyball. <laughs> you remember yep. that? View? Yeah, so, they, they... I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. This feels like a Moneyball kind of team, you know, guys that are well. <laughs> Paul I Fenton mean, is a genius. He, he secretly assembled be the best team ever, and we didn't know, and we fired right. him. Right. And we didn't even know. <laughs> How pissed! Like, let's say the Wild do come back. And they just go on a Stanley well, Cup run and they win it. I know well, it's a long shot, but I'm just saying how pissed would Paul no. Fenton be because it's his team Paul that Benton he built. <laughs> That'd be pretty I, I, funny. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? I, I still think that I, I, I think I, I think this is something to do. Honestly, I feel like B Bill Guerin has something to do with the mentality of this organization. Though, I love Bill somewhere Guerin. Somewhere yeah. the culture. Yeah, something to do with the culture. He's in Russia he's right now. Oh, is he talking to Cap Bro Kaprasov? Yeah, he's watching him. Kaprasov? He's watching uh, his teammate with the Wild draft as well. Um, a lot of people oh, think wow. that he's, okay. uh, they're both going to be over here next year, but uh, there's some issues with salary and stuff like that. I saw Russo talking about, so we don't have to get into that. But uh, that's where he is right now. Yeah, that's we don't. Interesting. My yeah. last hot take is uh, so like like we talked about earlier. Um, you know, we're a two games two two game winning streak away from being in like a playoff spot, but we're also a two game losing streak away from being in last place. I'm saying if we lose five, six, seven in a row, which is not unlikely actually, just because this team has got has proven to be really streaky. If that happens, I think that the very first player actually on the trading block is going to be Miko Koivu. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, people interested in having him. He's on the last year of his contract, and I think it would only be nice if we just essentially gave him, not give him, we'd get something in return, obviously, but let him have a chance at a legit Stanley Cup run when he's... 36, almost 37 years old. So I mean, I, so the, I so if the team starts to tank in this month, my hot take is that Miko is gone. He's going to be one of the first players gone and in case of a rebuild. Let's hear your last yeah. take, Jim. I so my last take maybe isn't necessarily for the no, no December. It, it kind of applies uh, because Devin Dubnik has been so absent, but. I'm thinking this is this overall in its absence overall I think is and this is kind of a hot take I think this is the beginning of the end for Devin Dubnik dun 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 yeah I, I think so I, yeah you definitely heard it but uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think I think this is the uh, the, the beginning of the end for Devin Dubnik the I think Sealock and Kakinen are going to be playing well and I think that either Dubnik will be traded, dealt with at the deadline, or he won't be re-signed in the offseason and we'll let him go. I think that's just the way it is. Yeah, what do you do if uh, Stalock and Kakinen stay hot, man? I know. You, you, uh, keep, you keep Stalock, and then you keep Kakinen as her backup. Yeah. No, right, right there. That's, that's there a go. duo right yeah. there. And uh, they're definitely going to be takers for Devin Dubnik. They're definitely yeah, definitely. He's, he's played too well over the last few years. I know this year hasn't been too great, but... Um, just like Jack Levern says, I love I love excuses, and Devin Dubnik has a lot of reasons to have excuses right now uh, for not you know yes. being in the best mental shape and stuff like that. So again, we wish Dad, the Dubnik family the best of luck in what's ever going on. This yep. 
was the fourth ever episode of the Wild Takes podcast. What'd you think of it, Jake? I I I I I thought this was the uh, probably the best episode of the Wild Takes podcast. This was the wildest episode of the, of the podcast. You know why? Because Bubba wasn't on it. I, I, I and, knew and you, and you know what? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I, I just want to hear. I just want to hear what he says about it. To be honest with you, but there's none of that. There's I, I don't hear a lot of that weird bickering or anything like that. It turns out. It was a lot more peaceful because Bubba wasn't on it. Yeah, exactly. And and there wasn't someone trying to contradict contradict every one of my points. It was great. It yeah. was soothing. It was very, it was very calming. Great. Uh, 11, it was peaceful. It was great. December fifth, which is tomorrow for us. Uh, the podcast will be out before the game. The I think so. But uh, the Wild will be taking yeah. on the Tampa Bay Lightning in Tampa Bay. Oh, I just want to say something really quick. Um, I wish that. Yeah. It would suck for the it would suck for the team and for making revenue and stuff, but I really wish that um, the XL Energy Center was as empty as Florida Stadium because the tickets would be nice and cheap and I could go to every game. Uh, did you see how I empty know. that stadium was? Yeah. How do they continue was... to remain in uh, in that state? I mean, I know it's different for uh, Tampa Bay. They actually have a decent fan base, but the Florida Panthers they 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 are having so many issues drawing people in, and it's not like they're a horrible team. No, they're not. That, that was, yeah, I was watching. I noticed that too. And it's like, if I live down there and I know they're in Sunrise, Florida, that's not necessarily, there's not, I think it's like more towards Miami, but you're not the, you're pretty much, you know, an only team in that city. You think they'll gain more people to come out there. It's warm and go to an arena and watch some hockey. You think they would be able to attract more people, but I, I saw yeah, like that an was article. embarrassing. I saw like an article last year um, that um, to encourage more people to buy season tickets because no one was doing them. They were literally offering season tickets for like twelve dollars a game and like like you know lower bowl seats. That's insane. I w- if I lived down there, I would take those in a heartbeat. Oh, in a second. even if I like if I was just living down there and I was still a Wild fan, like I, I would just I'd be like, uh, yeah, because you, you know every other sport in Miami, like even the Dolphins tickets are probably expensive as hell just because it's the NFL. You know, I would take those tickets. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you for go sure. To see any team you want. Yeah, I mean, it would be great. You have a nice warm winter, and then afterwards, you wouldn't yeah. be freezing. It's it's fucking cold to leave the XL oh, Energy wow. Center sometimes. Yeah, I know, I right? Tears shooting out of my eyes sometimes. It's ridiculous. I know, me too. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> but but they play Tampa Bay tomorrow, or Tampa Bay. Yeah, Tampa Bay Lightning tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, well. Tampa Bay hasn't been. Uh, last year, they were um, the President Cup, Cup winners uh, for the best record mm-hmm. in the league. This year, not so much. They have a similar yeah. record to the Wild. I think their record is, yeah, the record's 13 wins, 9 losses, and 3 overtime losses. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, gosh, whenever I say this, it doesn't bode well for the Wild, but I like the Wild's chances in that game. I really do. <laughs> Every single I time I say have... that in the Wild Takes podcast, like hey. the very next game, they've lost. But uh, I really do like their chances. Yeah, me too. And they they played fairly well against Tampa Bay in the last few years, even when Tampa Bay has been really good, you mm-hmm. know, or they've had better records. But I got to say, Tampa Bay, they, they should feel better that they have this record or if they just coast their way into the playoffs because I feel like they would have a better chance of win- actually winning a series or making a run in the Stanley Cup if they were like a wild card team than being the best team in the NHL because they always seem to choke whenever they when they ever they finish with like a top record in the NHL like they did last year in the playoffs. So I feel like they should feel more comfortable just – are focusing more on just trying to coast into the playoffs and and be like a wild card team because I feel like they'd have better luck. I don't know why, but you just heard it from journalist Jake, the premier and best yeah. journalist in the NHL. Thank yep. you for watching Tampa another Bay's episode takes. of the Wild Takes podcast. Be sure to check us out um, for our weekly Wild Takes at the Minnesota Rundown podcast. Um, you can see that all at our YouTube page. Uh, check out our website, 10,000takesmn.com. Check out our Twitter, 10,000takesmn. Uh, check out all of our social media. Um, it's going to be in the description of the podcast. Thank you very, very much for listening, and Jake's going to leave you with one last parting thought. What is that? Uh, well, just uh, keep your uh, stick on the ice and the legs feed the wolf gentlemen and this isn't involving this isn't involving hockey per se but if you're gonna go hunting for the bear you gotta be prepared to get the bear and that's what i'm gonna end you with you heard it first from journalist jake thanks for listening bye guys